Hello, this is Dr. Scott McLean, and this is a video about how to plan a lower implant using CT technology and Smart Fusion. What we'll do is show you a Nobel Clinician model and show you how to minimize bone loss by placing the implant at an appropriate level. So during this case, we'll be discussing a conical connection implant, which does have a platform shift. And we want to look at where we place this, how do we place it, and how do we kind of use CT planning and then guided surgery. During this CT planning session, we're going to use Nobel Clinician software to do what's called a smart fusion. A smart fusion is a blend of a scanned model into a CT model. So the two being put together allows you to see soft tissues, where tooth position is, and more importantly, you can then uh, fabricate a guide template so that you're able to position the implant in the exact position for depth and angulation. After leveling the model and the CT, it's important to make sure that the alignment is okay. So we'll check this in three different positions, in the anterior and the posterior, make sure that the pink line lines up with the teeth themselves. And this ensures that when you're doing your planning, that the bone is going to be referenced to the actual model that's been smart fused into the CT scan. Now that the alignment has been confirmed, we can start to look at the site that we're going to place the implant. We can see actually the nerve way, 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 way down in this case. So it's one of those ideal cases that we really would dream about. However, we do have to follow the angle of the bone. So what you like to do is to align the window, which is a cross-sectional window that's going to align you to placement. Now looking at this, you can see the soft tissues now over the bone and it comes up quite a bit in the mid-crestal area. So this mid-crestal area is a little bit high and I wouldn't want to place the implant based on this kind of soft tissue because it would have poor emergence profile and therefore food entrapment around this particular site. During this presentation we're going to ignore the fact that we have a lot of soft tissue here and start to place the implant in alignment with the temporary wax up that we've uh, created. So we'll pick a parallel CC implant which has a conical connection. We'll place the implant at the crestal level and you'll notice that the bone is very thin around this particular area. And this is uh, quite typical if we're placing this too high. The other thing you'll notice is the orange sleeve over top of the implant. And this shows us that there's not enough space to have a fully guided case on this particular case. And so we have to go to a pilot drill, which is the first two millimeter drill, which will give us the depth and angulation of this implant. But then we're gonna have to proceed by hand. But what you'll notice is that it's still a very thin bone around the top of this implant. And the emergence profile is gonna be an issue just by looking at how this is gonna go. So we start to place the implant a little bit deeper and by doing so, then we can improve the emergence profile, which is going to improve the, uh, the ability to keep food from trapping around this implant. You'll notice that the red sleeve has given us a warning, and Oscar will pop up and say that the pilot sleeve is colliding with the dental cast. So this does not allow us to proceed. Therefore, we either have to offset this, or we can just move it back. And if we move it back, we can keep it away from the soft tissue. But really, one of the things I like to do is to plan the implant based on where the implant should be from a soft tissue position on the cast itself. So I know where I want the free gingival margin to be on the cast. Therefore, I'd like to create that prior to scanning the model and prior to doing the smart fusion. So it takes a little pre-planning by the dental technician to make sure that we're doing this. But you do notice that we can get a good sense of emergence profile by creating a little line. We can use some of the tools to know about clinician to do this. And this gives us a sense of this is really where this implant should be in order to maximize the emergence profile, which is gonna minimize food entrapment. And I do believe it's also going to minimize crustal bone loss by creating uh, an emergence that's going to keep bacteria from coming down in this area. Then we also get a good volume of soft tissue because it's been shown that if you have about three millimeters of soft tissue, Linkovicius has shown that uh, this is going to protect your crustal bone a little bit more. So we're getting down into the bone that's actually going to be more stable 
than keeping the implant high and uh, relying on soft tissue seal. And since this parallel CC has a platform shift plus a 45 degree bevel, you get almost a biological gasket that seals around the top of the implant. It makes this a really, uh, usually a stable environment. And it's been shown by uh, meta-analysis to improve and maintain crestal bone. So this is critical to long-term success and uh, just makes it so that it's going to be a little bit more predictable. So here's what I like to do is to cut back the model prior to scanning. So rather than having it like this, I'll cut it back to where I want the free gingival margin to be and do this in a three-dimensional kind of format. So once this is scanned again, we can now see that we can improve the planning capabilities of Nobel clinician by knowing where we want the soft tissue to be. It would actually be right at the bone level. So we want three millimeters of soft tissue around this. So we want to be planning this case to submerge this implant in a little bit to have the ideal bone around this implant, have the ideal soft tissue, have the ideal emergence profile. So we can't just plan on based on what you have there because often you have too much soft tissue and also too much bone and the bone would actually be quite thin around the crustal area. So if we move it down, we get into an area that's going to be more crustal bone with uh, cortical bone on the outside. So we can see now, we can get this so that the two millimeter drill guide is going to be purple, which means that it's not going to have to be offset at all. We can plan this case to be exactly what we want to do in the mouth. So when we go to the mouth, we're going to flap this open, maybe cut the bone a little bit prior to placing the guide, and then we'll place this implant exactly to the level we want. And so this is a very predictable way to get ideal emergence profile. So look at this now. We can see that when we draw the emergence profile, it's going to be exactly to what we want. And look at the soft tissue that's going to be around this. And having the platform shift is going to enable you to have more robust tissue to seal the implant. And I believe this is critical to the long-term success of implantology. It means that we're going to maintain that, that biological gasket around the top of the implant. So this is how much bone is going to have to be reduced. And we can see that um, you can actually place the implant, put a cover screw on this implant, which protects the whole top of the implant, and cut the bone down to the level that you want, maintaining the interproximal bone and having this perfect. So if we left the bone where it is, it's not going to be perfect. It's going to be a little short, stubby tooth and have uh, biological problems for the patient. It's going to be weaker. It's going to be... Uh, less aesthetic, it's going to have problems with not sealing bacteria out and so all those type of things are going to cause problems for the for the patient. So one of the most obvious uh, type of outcomes I see if we didn't place the implant a little bit deeper and we placed it just at the what the bone is where the patient is now we'd actually have some crustal bone loss that's going to be very predictable because it's so thin and it's just not going to be sealed off properly plus the emergence profile will not be perfect. So we do need to plan the case so that we sometimes have to put this implant in a little bit deeper and make it so that it's gonna be very predictable. Now once we get the um, template, this is gonna enable us to predictably place this implant, do some bone reduction, and uh, really put this in the ideal position for long-term success. So we have the uh, ability to place the screw channel, so it's going to be coming right out the central fossa. We also have the ability to know what the emergence profile is going to look like prior to placing the implant. And we may have to do bone reduction before we can put the template in, so this is something that you have to be very aware of. And definitely this will have to be flapped before the uh, template goes in. So you have to make sure that you're uh, capable of doing those type of things prior to placing the template. So you can check the template on the model, but since the model's been reduced, you need to make sure that that tissue is out of the way and uh, check this by looking at the windows and making sure that the template is seated at the time of surgery because that will ensure you have the proper depth and angulation 
of the final placement of the implant. So really cool technology. Check it out. Uh, I'm just loving using this type of uh, placement. I get them exactly where I want to put them. So I plan where I want it and then put it where we plan it. And this is Dr. Scott McLean and this has been a presentation about implant dentistry.